I think circumcision is bad and I don't think people should do it. Um, and I'm going to try and explain why. It's going to be mostly based on my personal experience, which is not completely unique, but I think is somewhat unusual and gives me um, a good perspective um, on what circumcision actually does, the effect it has. There is some data out there. There's certainly a lot of anecdotal uh, evidence um, to suggest that circumcision is, is not a good practice. And I think there is some research and data, but I'm not really going to reference any of that because it's already out there and I'm trying to kind of add something new or somewhat new or novel to the discussion with this video um, rather than reaffirming stuff that's already out there. But there is there is a ton of stuff to read online and a lot of people describing their experiences, which is worth checking out if you have any interest in the topic. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, so I when I was younger, I had this uh, condition called phimosis uh, and it's where um, the skin cover your, your skin goes all the way over the head of your dick basically like it doesn't retract um it's not really a condition i mean isn't you know it's, most of the time it's not really that bad it doesn't really cause any problem it just looks a bit different to how a normal dick looks basically um and uh it can, i think in some rare cases there can be complications where it like partially retracts but because it's so the skin around the, the very end is so tight there's like such a small gap it can partially retract and your dick can get like stuck and I've heard like horrible things about it but I think that is incredibly rare generally speaking I think it's fine it's not really a problem um anyway I had this and I never really noticed it until like well, I still kind of didn't put two and two together but I remember seeing like for some reason in primary school in the toilets like people would like fucking have their dicks out and stuff you know like, show each other their dicks and I remember seeing when people would like pull their foreskin back. I just was so horrified by it because to me that was like, that was like seeing like the inside of my dick. Like I just couldn't comprehend. It looked so wrong to me, and I still didn't really think about it. I was just like, oh, it's fucking crazy. I don't know what the hell's going on there. And uh, yeah, anyway, then years later, I guess like when I, I can't really remember exactly, but when I was older, I guess from like watching a lot of porn and stuff, I just started to become more and more aware like my dick looks a bit different to other people's and like i said it did uh, there wasn't there was no it didn't cause any problem other than that but i just thought like oh this is not really how my dick's supposed to look and maybe it's affecting its functioning like maybe it will feel different if i if it was if like i didn't have this and maybe um there's a reason it's supposed to you know your foreskin is supposed to retract or whatever so i um decided and, and probably I mean realistically I think like aesthetically speaking like um whilst it wasn't strictly necessary like I'd probably rather not currently have it because it just kind of like just kind of looks a bit unusual it's just a bit you know like it's probably better to I, I don't know yeah it's probably been easier for me to to not have phimosis but anyway um I decided to get circumcised which I've since learned is not necessary to treat phimosis it's quite easy to treat it without doing that. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not 100% certain. But yeah, from, from what I gather, like you don't need to be circumcised if you've got phimosis. It can be done in a different way where you still leave basically the foreskin pretty much completely intact. And if you think about it from a physical point of view, like if you know what it looks like, phimosis, like it makes sense that you could pretty easily fix it without fully fucking cutting someone's foreskin off. Like it's not it's not necessary as far as I can tell. Anyway, um, so I was like a teenager. I was like, I think I was like 17 or something when I got circumcised. So I very much was like, you know, very much familiar with my dick at that point and like how it felt and everything. And um, yeah, anyway, I I got circumcised and... Um, oh yeah, that was it. I, I got circumcised basically. There's nothing, nothing to add to that. And afterwards... Uh, there was an immediate difference. Like at first, it was kind of like amazing to me because I just really liked the way it looked. It was kind of like crazy. It was, I mean, kind of a bizarre experience if you can imagine. Like you know, never having seen the head of my dick before. Like it was completely covered, and suddenly, like my dick looked like you know all the dicks I'd like 
seen in porn and stuff like it just looked what I thought was like normal which well I mean is normal really more or less um but it's uh yeah it was crazy like suddenly I could you know it was like it was so I was kind of excited about it from that point of view um but then quite soon I noticed uh the difference in sensation and it was much harder to wank and like I I, I couldn't I couldn't do it in the same way that I used to and it was kind of like I needed kind of like friction and for some reason I got into the habit of using like cloves um uh like t-shirts and stuff and kind of like sort of like chafing my dick with them just to get some sensation because it was quite hard to do so otherwise and um yeah it was it was uncomfortable and then from having the head kind of exposed all the time when I was walking around, and like rubbing against my pants and stuff. First of all, that was uncomfortable in itself. Like suddenly it was like uncomfortable to walk around. And then also, um, it was quite rapidly starting to lose sensitivity and kind of like drying out and stuff. And I could feel this process taking place, you know, it happened fairly quickly. It didn't take long really for this to happen. And also it was very noticeable. It was like, you know, a, just a literal decline in sensitivity. It wasn't, this wasn't kind of you know it wasn't it wasn't hard to spot basically um and uh yeah i don't remember exactly how long i think i just kind of accepted that as somewhat normal not as somewhat normal but just i i don't know i wasn't you know in spite of deciding to get circumcised at 17 i wasn't like super proactive i guess um being the age that i was generally speaking i wasn't like super proactive about life so i kind of I kind of just ignored it, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was then in, I then got into a relationship and, um, it's not like I had like, no, like, you know, I still enjoyed sex and stuff, but like, I went from when I was younger, like being like, uh, you know, enjoying coming, like, a little bit too much, let's say, to, like, it could sometimes be quite hard, like, you know, like, it would sometimes take me quite a long time, um, and I think there's a notion in porn, like, that if you're a man, like, you should, like, fuck for hours without coming or something, and, like, that's kind of weird and a bit fucked up, and, like, I don't really think that's how sex is supposed to be, not necessarily saying you shouldn't fuck for hours, but, like, you shouldn't not come during that time. That's kind of crazy. I mean, look, everyone's different. I'm not trying to like, you know, I'm not saying there's like a, a right or wrong way for people to be, but like, I don't think the fact that that is seen as normal, I think A is obviously just like porn's a bit fucked up and B, I think it's because most of the porn actors are American and therefore circumcised and it does just change the way you have sex and like, um, in in not a very good way, I would say. Uh, and it's like you have to come through like friction it's not as pleasurable it's kind of weird um so anyway yeah it was like then sometimes like yeah I would sort of um I wouldn't say I would like last longer because I'd last the same amount of time I would just come less times like so it's not really a matter of like lasting longer if you're circumcised it's not even it's just that you just don't come as much basically uh, uh, and it's harder to do so and not as enjoyable to do so um, so anyway and I, I think that can cause sexual frustration which in turn is not very good mentally for you and is not very good for like your sexual health and like a relationship and it's just like it can mean it's a bit like it's kind of like never being full you know like you're never having you never you're always if you're just like constantly hungry like a little bit it's probably not you know it's it's not good for your kind of it's like hard to relax you know and it will make you sort of think about food too much and make you you know never fully enjoy your food because you never feel completely full um so anyway that went on for a little while and uh then eventually I started reading more about it and stuff and reading about uh foreskin restoration and I was lucky in the sense that uh, I had quite a lot of skin left after I was circumcised. Um, the guy, the surgeon asked me, he said, 
Do you want it loose or tight? And I didn't really understand. I was just, I just didn't really fucking have a clue what like ramifications either of those options would have. Uh, so I just said, go somewhere in the middle. Thank God I didn't say tight. I mean, Jesus, because there are horror stories of people who have them done too tight. And it's like, you know, and as much as I didn't want to reference data, you know, there are some estimates that like uh, over 100 babies, I think some estimates over 200 babies die from circumcision related complications in the US alone. Again, I don't know. I've seen that those varying estimates between 100 to 250 in various different places. Um, And I have no, whilst I can't fully stand behind that and say it's 100% true, I have no reason to not believe it. I've seen it, you know, look it up for yourselves. But yeah, um, definitely there are undoubtedly a lot of complications relating to circumcision especially given it is ultimately a totally unnecessary procedure that nobody in europe does anyway and they're all we're all fine they're all fine yeah i can't really include myself in that group because i had it done but anyway um yeah uh yeah so some people they get them done too tight and and it's it's horrible like they can't get a boner without like serious pain and it's so tight that they can't really stretch the skin it's like takes them like it would take them years just to get to a point of being able to kind of do like to use like a device or whatever to restore it and it's um it's really fucked up and uh yeah really if it's not strictly necessary it goes without saying that it's not a good idea to be like cutting up babies penises like you know it's just that should be common sense, I think, and it is common sense to many people and in many places. Um, anyway, yeah. So I said go in the middle, and you know it seemed like I was left with quite a lot of skin. Um, so I was able to restore pretty easily. I think for some reason it was just it was quite easy for me. I feel very lucky in that, like I, I wasn't very disciplined about it. There were like some devices I bought, some of which I found helpful, some I didn't. I don't remember the exact names. Well, not that they weren't helpful, but there was one you have to, like, tie it around your leg. And I didn't really like that. It just felt... I, I don't know. I just didn't like it. I kept... Even though this is not really possible, I kept thinking it would, like, catch on something. The strap and it would just have some horrible fucking dick accident or something. I don't know. Um, I just didn't like it that much. I used it for a bit. I got some progress from it. I did manual stretching. Um, and I also had... There's another device um, where it's, like, rubber bands and there's, like, a stick and the rubber bands like pull the stick up i'm sorry i don't you know like remember the name of it uh but it might be the tlc tugger i'm not sure anyway uh there's a lot of a a huge range and they all work differently for different people and i think since i did it like because i don't do it anymore i think there's been more developments and you know there's the the, you know just look it up if you're interested but yeah there's all sorts of interesting devices that are like quite ingenious really considering a lot of times just you know random like blokes just like made these kind of for themselves and also to you know um they didn't have like funding necessarily a lot of the time as well they just came up with these clever methods to do it which is great um but anyway yeah i use those and and um a bit of uh manual stretching and i still like once in a while just like in the shower or whatever just you know stretch a little bit with my hands um and I wouldn't, I'm not fully restored now, like, but pretty much I'm enough where I don't really care. Like, uh, I don't need to be, it's not, you know, it's like if I'm flaccid, it's covered basically. And, um, that's all I, all I need. Um, I, I just, I guess I'm just a bit lazy about it or whatever. And that's, you know, yeah, it's plenty like it's fully, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's basically, it's fully covered whenever it needs to be. Um, and yeah, it's night and day. The difference is night and day, or rather day and then night and then day, you know, in terms of like uh, the sensitivity is fully restored. I This was a couple of years ago I did this, and like it was like, it was weird because, you know, I wasn't that young by the time I like completed the process. And my, the sort of, my enjoyment of sex and everything else, it got kind of like better as I got older, which is sort of the reverse of how it kind of, works in theory but um yeah it was like it was amazing like it was really um it was really uh just really cool to have that experience like i don't know to sort of to have to have thought at one point oh i've kind of permanently like fucked myself up and to have known what it was like before to have not done that and then to be able to you know fix it and end up like um you know uh just 
I don't know how to describe it. It's a bit uncomfortable to talk about some of this, like, I mean, too specific. But but yeah, anyway, basically, it was just it was much, much, much better. Like everything was fucking great after I restored it, and still is. Um, which is really good. It's really good that that is an option, but you shouldn't have to do that in the first place. Um, if you are circumcised, like you shouldn't have been circumcised. It was wrong. It was. It was. It, it just was. It was just you know the wrong thing for your parents or the doctor or whoever to do maybe well i'm sure in the case of your parents certainly if like they opted for you to have that procedure they did it with good intentions they felt it was the right thing to do doctors probably a lot of them think it's the right thing to do but i think it is just a way for people to make money like um there was uh, in in italy for example <clears throat> years ago because people are like, oh, it's a doctor. I think the doctor would know. Well, doctors have different opinions all over the world. And it depends which doctor you ask. So you can't just take what the doctor does or says as like, <coughs> as being akin to the word of God or something. Um, in Italy, in the uh, 70s or 80s, they they started, I think they had some kind of, it was like a, a hybrid private and public medical system. I don't remember exactly how it worked, but basically they would reimburse hospitals for they would they would pay them a certain amount of the, every time they had to do this they would pay them this amount every time they did this they pay them this amount a normal birth they would get like nothing like you know a small amount of money that would just about cover the expense of it um because there was because it was part it was like subsidized, subsidized i guess um but then also there was um uh you know a bit of room a bit of <laughs> margin for profit or whatever so then for a cesarean it would be a much larger amount of money because it's a more complicated procedure i guess um and so they would give them uh they would give them a lot more money and even relative to the complicatedness of the procedure it was still a much greater and you know more appealing uh sum of money and a, you know easier money for that hospital basically and the result of this is known as like the cobra effect this happens a lot of times the original cobra effect is quite uh funny and interesting to look up as well like you quite likely know what it is already but look it up if you haven't it's a pretty funny thing and you see this happening a lot um and the number of cesarean births went through the roof like suddenly everyone was having being given cesarean suddenly everyone needed it you know it was important for everyone to have this done um and a friend of mine who's Italian, uh, he said when he was younger in his class, like, there was like, he said there was like 11 or 12 people in a class of like 18 or 19 or something that were born from cesarean, which is ridiculous when you think about it. Like, not many people are born via cesarean. It's not, it's not, I mean, it's, you know, it's not some completely obscure, like, strange procedure that never happens, but it's not it shouldn't be the norm, you know, it shouldn't be like more than half of the class were, anyway, yeah, so basically the the, the obvious um, point of that story is that they were quite happy to give people unnecessary surgical procedures just to make a bit of extra money, so uh, not that all doctors would do that, not that all hospitals would do that, but, you know, when there's a profit incentive, like, people have shown, you know, they'll they'll do fucking dirty things, like, to make a bit of money, Sometimes they don't even think of it like that, you know, whatever. Maybe they're just unconsciously guided by it. But anyway, um, yeah, American hospitals get paid for every circumcision. So take from that what you will. Um, and uh, yeah, but what I meant to say anyway is, yeah, it is it is a really good thing. Like if you, if it, on an individual level, it's a really good thing to remember. Like, you know, if you're, circumcising is causing you problems you can mostly fix it i would say you'll never get back the nerve endings in that particular piece of skin that is gone fine um and that's bad like that's not fair it's not a good thing and um some people say that it's like way there are way more nerve endings in the foreskin than like other parts of the skin i don't know i mean it is to be fair it's like it seems like a very kind of dense um sort of portion of the skin of your dick but 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't remember my foreskin being like particularly sensitive. It, to some degree it was, you know, and I wish I could just have it exactly as it was and have had the alternative procedure to treat phimosis, which is just to kind of open it up. Like that would be much better. Um, but, well, maybe not much better. It would be preferable for me. But regardless, I'm I'm very happy with how it is now. And um, it doesn't really take long most of the time. So if you've been circumcised, like, and you're sort of bothered about it, don't worry because you can just fix it, basically. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, but, 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 but that shouldn't take away from the seriousness of the reality of this being more or less a routine procedure in some places and in some cultures. Uh, that's not, that's just not acceptable really. Um, it shouldn't be tolerated. People are laughed at when they talk about it. Uh, it's not taken seriously. People rightly talk about FGM and how horrible that is. And it is. And, um, FGM as far as I'm concerned and from everything I can gather is a much more brutal and completely damning procedure than male circumcision right from what I know I don't really understand you know like it fully but from what I gather it basically destroys any possibility of having sexual pleasure for a woman like um which I doesn't entirely make sense to me I can't fully understand that but allegedly that is the case and that's fucking horrible um and really sad that that happens to so many people for absolutely no reason but um people are judgmental of that whilst in the west we have so much medical knowledge at our disposal and still circumcise boys when they're babies for no reason um it's crazy. I don't even really feel like giving the arguments for like the fucking the the dignity of a response. But briefly, I mean, people say there's a cleanliness thing. Take a shower. Like you should just if you're an adult, like you shouldn't be walking around with like a smelly dick. Like no matter if you have foreskin or not, that's insane. It's just ridiculous. Like just wash. Yeah. Um, and two is there may be a tiny, tiny sort of increase in the possibility of you getting an STD if you have, if you're, it may slightly reduce the possibility of you harboring an STD in your penis, basically, if you, um, if you're circumcised. Well, you're assuming on a baby's behalf that they're going to be promiscuous and that they might get an STD. Yeah, maybe they're not. Maybe they're going to only have sex with one person in their entire lives and they would like to have their foreskin when they're an adult, you know? Um, also, okay, if there's a, a tiny... If we're talking like an epidemic and like everybody's like, you know, dying from some disease and this is the... Okay, well, maybe there's like something something we have to think about. But you're talking about a, a, my, a tiny reduction in the possibility of something which is generally speaking quite rare and in most instances with most types of those diseases it's not hugely serious like some of them are some of them are terrible i'm not denying like stds are, and, and in fact it seems to be a, a growing issue and something that could escalate out of control but this is some specific types of stds there may be and i don't even i think this might not even be true i don't think it's even conclusive evidence um and it's like well you could say you could then argue that we should cut women's breasts off to stop them getting breast cancer it would reduce the likelihood of them getting breast cancer but we're not going to do that because it's fucking sick like we shouldn't do you know you there are a lot of parts of you that you could mutilate in order to reduce the risk of you could take off large portions of your you know like oh i don't want to get melanoma so i'm going to fucking shave my skin off like it's just it's just insane like um that's not that's not a normal reason to do something so drastic. It's also done to babies without anesthetics and people say, oh, they're fine. Like, well, how do you know they're fine? They don't, they can't tell you. They forget it by the time they're older. No one remembers being a baby. 
It doesn't mean it's not traumatizing. It doesn't mean it's not horrific. And it doesn't mean necessarily, I don't know, but that might have some effect psychologically on them, like when they're older. At the very least, anyway, as is pretty well documented and is common sense and is scientific fact, it has a significant impact on them physically. Um, Another important thing to note in that regard in terms of sex, and the reason it's important, it's not just because it covers the head of your dick and makes it more sensitive, it's also because when um, when you're um, having sex, like, you're not just... It, essentially, if you're... If you're um, if you're circumcised, it's essentially like being a dildo, basically, which is just like an object. It doesn't move. It's just completely, and it it the only motion that it experiences is the motion of going in and out, and that is the same with a circumcised penis, basically. But when you actually have foreskin, you're not just going in and out of like the vagina or the ass or whatever you're doing. You know, um, you're also going in and out of your own skin, like it's. Um, it's uh, that is also uh, it's a it completely essential part of sex, really. Um, not just for the man, by the way, like um, or the giver or whatever. Like that's really important, actually, for both people. Like um, it feels totally different from both sides. So it's a hugely, hugely, hugely important part of sexual functioning, basically. Um, and uh, it's insane. Yeah, it's it's crazy to take that away from people before they even have a chance to decide. And if it is so important that you're worried about them getting STDs, and well, let them elect to have it done when they're older. Um, it's it it is it, horrifying, like to to impose that not only that procedure but that belief and that kind of expectation on a baby it's disturbing um so uh yeah if you're having kids in the future or anything please please don't do this to them read about it and just like understand how unnecessary it is and that in huge swathes of the world like nobody does it and they're fine we're not all walking around with like crazy levels of stds and fucking smelly dicks and like uh, it's just completely normal. It's completely normal in Europe to not be circumcised because it is normal to not be circumcised. So, um, yeah, and like I said, if you if you are circumcised and you don't think it's a problem, you think it's fine, well, uh, consider that your perspective is somewhat limited if you were circumcised from birth and I'm not trying to make you feel bad about yourself or your quality of life or quality of your sex life or whatever like but just please be open-minded at least and at the very least understand that you don't necessarily fully understand if you're comfortable and you're happy and you don't want to do it like i'm not saying anyone should fucking you know have to or that they should have to listen to my advice on it but at least i see a lot of people being very judgmental of others who are unhappy about being circumcised and you shouldn't be like fine if you want to just leave everything as it is that's like up to you ultimately um and i hope that you will reconsider but um yeah as for people who are unhappy about having had the procedure done like like i said don't worry about it because you know you can more or less fix it um so uh yeah that's all hope this was informative or useful in some way um take care